whatever you like to do. It doesn't have to be virtuoso level. To be fulfilling, to fill you up with energy and joy, to connect you to your intuition, to make you happier. This is a gift we can give ourselves every single day. Welcome to Modern Financial Wellness, the podcast dedicated to helping you feel better about your finances. I'm your host, Jim Grace, and I'll be your guide as we discuss the psychology of money and explore the emotional aspects that shape our financial decisions and how we feel about them. A quick note before we start, although I do hope that you find the information on this show to be helpful, in no way are any of these discussions to be taken as specific financial advice. Please do your own research and talk to your own advisors, especially when making important financial decisions. All right, Rochelle Seltzer, thank you so much for joining me on Modern Financial Wellness. It's great to talk to you today. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's great to be with you. The book is Live Big, a manifesto for a creative life. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to you about the book and digging into some of what's in there. I love a lot of the concepts. I love the way that it's put together. Um, so excited again to uh, to chat with you about that. Before we do, you know, your your background is entrepreneur, author, lots of other things, generally great human being. Do you want to no. just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe your past experience? What, what were some of the informative things that led to you writing a book about creativity and living big? Oh, I love this question because it's <laughs> it's the most surprising thing that happened in my life that I never saw coming, I guess. I started my career professionally as a designer. I owned a design and marketing communication firm for 27 years. And Sweet. I thought that's what I was always going to do, right? Um, and then life changes and the recession happened in 2009. And I hired my first coach to help help me sort of uh, deal with the stress of keeping my team employed and making it through what was a big challenge. And Great. what I never saw coming, I thought I was getting help with strategies, right? Marketing strategies, sales strategies, whatever. And the work really started with me. My coach really Great. challenged me to think about how I was leading my team and leading my clients. And why was Great. I not showing up very much in our marketing why wasn't I being more visible? And what I started to realize is I wasn't being that visible in my life. And I was yeah. just doing what I was doing because it was there. I was proud of it. I had built it. But one thing and another, we did pull through the recession. But the big realization I had in the process of working with my coach was that I one day dawned on me that I just didn't love it anymore. And I said to myself, why am I doing something that's not lighting me up? Right. So did you feel like it did light you up for however many oh, of the 27 it. years? Yeah, I liked it. Liked I don't it. think so anything not even ever lit me up the way the work is <laughs> I'm doing now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah. I, and I didn't question it so much. You know, mm -hmm. that's the other interesting mm -hmm. thing. I was pretty, just kind of day to day was life was busy, you know, and right. I was doing a lot. I, I had my business. I was a you know, a mom, I was on boards, I was doing a lot of things. And mm -hmm. um, all these things I, that busy, successful moms do, right? Yeah. You're, you're doing the things and checking the but boxes. I didn't check and in with myself. And yeah. the truth is, um, I started to realize that I wasn't living the most vibrant, satisfying life, yeah. even though I've got an amazing marriage and wonderful children. There was, you know, we spent a lot of hours of our lives with our work. And that was not Yay. really, truly fulfilling me. Right. So I sold the business. Right. And the piece that's the most surprising to people that I never used to talk about because it was kind of embarrassing was that I was an award-winning designer, but I was not personally creative. I was really blocked. Really? I really could not. Yeah. I loved art and I couldn't understand how artists made art. So I stuck with mm -hmm. what was easy for me. It was easy to tell your story and solve your problem through design, I didn't have to do this. I, mean, I didn't have to go into my own heart mm -hmm. and express anything about myself. Mm -hmm. And when I realized yeah. that that was actually something that I should pay attention to, that I wanted to pay attention to, lo and behold, the universe introduced me to a great teacher. And I spent two years studying about the power of creativity as a, a force for healing and a force for um, well-being. 
And wow. I I couldn't believe everything that I learned. It was so exciting. I want I want to click in onto that and go a little bit deeper. Oh, but yeah. just to, to clarify, when you hired your coach, did you think you were hiring a business coach Absolutely. to help you navigate? That's what I hired. Challenging. I came from times strategies, and, Jim. You know, <laughs> I yeah, for yeah. Else. <laughs> and, and that woke you up. That process, that yeah. coaching process, woke you up yeah. to how you were feeling and experiencing the world, and and you made a left turn. Or 180 and, I, yeah, and decided I just, to... I, you know, I said to myself, I have maybe 10, 15 years of this professional life ahead of me and I want to love it. I want to wake up every day and love mm-hmm. what I'm doing. I didn't know what that mm-hmm. was. Kind of had an idea mm-hmm. about where I might go with it. Started down that path right. that still, you know, that wasn't it. And then as I right. say, I think when you are open and you are ready and you declare to yourself and, and when you declare to yourself, you declare to the universe what you want. Mm-hmm. Amazing things can happen. And for me, yeah. this teacher showed up in addition yeah, to what my did that coach. Look like? hmm? I didn't know that part of the story. I knew yeah. about the business a little bit and from well, our this past. Is a, a genius, um, an Israeli psychiatrist whose work is, he has something called the Psycho Creative Institute. I actually have been out of touch with him for a while. I hope that it's still there and flourishing. Um, but for those years that I worked with him and for a number of years afterwards, it, it was. Uh, he was a tremendous um, impact on my life and influence on my life with did everything you, I learned. Did you end up there because of the coaching process? Did that kind of my, push you? It was into actually the- my coach who had met him in a serendipitous way who made the introduction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the universe kind of puts you down the right path yeah. to explore your own creativity. That's yeah. what you realize is that you didn't weren't really tapped into your own creative spirit. I wasn't. Creative, and I didn't really understand yeah. the the depth and breadth of what creativity is about. Because I really mm-hmm. thought creativity are, you know, musicians who are brilliant talents and they pick up their instrument or they write their music or actors or, you know, writers of all different kinds. And I thought that those were the the rarefied, you know, amazing talented creators um yeah. who could do that and what i learned yeah. and what i've you know experienced in my life and what i teach now all the time and i and i advocate for is the power of creating actually if you want i can talk about the two sides of the creativity coin yeah please do please yeah. do um the first side is what we think about the expressive stuff of painting or writing or dancing or something and what i learned is that we all came into the world absolutely filled with creativity. And for most of us, it was either uh, minimized or criticized or in some way we've shut down. I mean, my, mm-hmm. one of my children in second grade, I remember he came home from school and said, oh, you know, so-and-so, the desk next to me makes these amazing dinosaurs. I can't do that. So I'm not, I can't draw, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. It happens in all sorts of ways. There are people that love to create, but then they've been moved to a practical, more, you know, reliable direction in math or science or, you know, who knows what, because their parents are afraid that they're not going to make a life as a creator, but they have it in Mm -hmm. them. Those are the lucky ones because they really still feel it in them. Most of us don't even know. That yeah, and from there. a parent's perspective, that's a really natural, you know, really probably what they think to be a very reasonable uh, way to try to guide your child, right? right. Towards something practical, something useful and, that you can I get a job. what I hear from people, Jim, is parents who say, sure, go into law or whatever, you know, but keep that part of you alive. Right. It's usually go into that other field, be a scientist, but don't, don't keep that part of you alive. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. what happens is that piece of us either doesn't ever really get developed or it gets kind of minimized and pushed to the side. And so we're not fully expressed. We're not fully showing up in the world with everything that we can. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that if you like to dig in your garden or work in a workshop or use your hands and pound on clay, you know, whatever you like to do, it doesn't have to be virtuoso level. To be yeah, hey. fulfilling, to um, fill you up with energy and joy, to connect you to your intuition, yeah, hey. to make you happier. Yeah, hey, hey. This is yeah, a hey. gift we can give ourselves every single day. 
every day. Yeah. And so many of yeah. us live without that piece, that dimension to our lives. Mm, mm. And it becomes important, right? It's, it's unfortunate because we find ourselves in a time where I think more and more you hear people searching for purpose and meaning and trying to tap into the situa- yeah, nah. intuition that you described, but that creativity is an important part of exploring that. And that's been stifled in a lot of folks. I for would say such it's a, actually a, a pathway to finding it because it's right. a pathway into your heart. Yeah. yeah. Into your emotions. I'm jumping ahead now. Yeah, you are. I'm jumping well, Let me ahead. just finish the other side of the, the, yeah. this little, this yeah. little um, lesson, yeah. I, if you will. I told you I was excited to talk about it. I apologize. No, I won't, it's good. I won't advance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other aspect of creativity that I actually had not considered myself, and I think is comes as a surprise to a lot of people, is that we can adopt the mindset that we are creators. So what does that look like? Rather than just reacting on the fly, because the words reaction and creation have the same letters, <laughs> yeah. rather than being in a reactive mode all the time, rushing through our lives and just boom, 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 and you know, responding without thought to an ultimatum or directive or anything or problem and rushing to, to figure out a solution or rushing into anxiety that there is no solution. We have the opportunity really? all day, every day to say, oh, what can I create now? What can I create as the next best step? What can I create as a better alternative? What can I create as a solution? We can create all day if we, yeah. if we consider ourselves and appreciate ourselves and take that little pause to say, I have the opportunity and the power to create what's best for me now. And I yeah. can keep taking the next best step because I think a lot of us feel like we have to make that perfect decision and we, we rip hard. And, and the truth is we just have to make one good step forward. And then take the next step. Mm-hmm. We can course correct. We can come up with new ideas. We have the ability to create in our, in our mindset all of the time. And mm. appreciating that about yourself and remembering it and practicing it is a game changer. It's really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about Live Big. Tell us a little bit yeah. about the so, book. First so of all, I, it I started down beautiful. this path of thank you. Uh, I started down this path. I uh, realized that I wanted to share these ideas with as many people as I could. And I wrote the book. It's Live Big, A Manifesto for a Creative Life. And it has mm-hmm. 20 tenets of my manifesto in it, if you will. It's mm-hmm. not the be-all and end-all. Your, your 20 ways of living big could be and creating your big life could vary from mine. But this, right. this is a starting point that I invite people to dive into and consider. And having been a designer, I knew just how beautiful I wanted this book to be, but I also knew that it would never get done if I both had to write it and design it. So I, um, I had Clyde, who's a brilliant designer, and I asked her if she wanted to design the book, and she really did a brilliant job. It's, it's really Great. colorful it- and, and engaging. And just to make a point, as I've gone through it, it's not a step by step to finding mm-hmm. a purpose and passion through creativity. It's really however you might want to kind of experience some of these lessons or activities. It's really it seems to be designed so you could just pull it open at at any chapter, any section, Actually, and kind of dig in and see how you respond to that was my intention. Being, I mean, I that, know that there are people who are. The way that they read a book is they read from page one all the way to the end. <laughs> I we, just spoke to somebody yesterday. She said, guess what chapter I'm up to? I finally got up to chapter, you know, the chapter on boldness. Um, in my opinion, the people that, that tell me that they just open it to the section, the chapter they want that day, or some people even they, open it randomly and see what's there for them, um, right. really get a lot out of the book. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think I, I'm one of these people where I, I know that finding purpose, finding meaning is an important part of all of our lives. And I want the cliffs notes. I want to get there. 
<laughs> but that's that's not the way the world works, right? Yeah. We have to do some of the work. And that's what you've presented to people is an opportunity to reflect and and do some work and and think about, you know, some of these different aspects of people's lives and how they yeah, kind of cultivate. I, so coaching is about taking action in your life. And I wanted yeah. this to be a book of of helping people take action and really bring mm-hmm. change that they're looking for into their lives. So every chapter is mm-hmm. pretty concise and easy to read, fast to read. And it's mm-hmm. followed by between three and six different exercises or practices that you can bring into your life to cultivate, to bring that attribute, you know, more fully mm-hmm. develop that attribute. And mm-hmm. I get tremendous satisfaction out of hearing the feedback from people about this exercise really meant a lot to me or this chapter really moved the needle in some way. Um, and Mm -hmm. you know, I know we talked a little bit before we, um, in our conversations before about the way I organized the book. So the first Mm -hmm. half is called the being of living big and the second half is the doing. (laughs) Yep. Yep. So I joke, I mean, it sounds like a joke to me, but I think it's really not a joke at all. We are human beings, but we spend most of our time doing and not really that Mm -hmm. much time being. So the Mm -hmm. state of being is, um, who are we? Who are we now? Who do we want to become? Who do we want and need to be in our lives to live the best lives that we can? And so right. the first half of the book, I'll just um, tell you some of the chapters. The first chapter is Slow Down and Be Still, which I just intuitively made the first chapter. And I have come to understand and believe in the year since I first started writing this book and have published it, that this is truly the foundation of living big. If we're always in motion and never stop and pause and give ourselves time to connect to our breath and our heart and our intuition, um, we're just kind of running on a hamster wheel. So that I think is really, really um, something I like to share with people. And then living in the present, because we tend to rehash the past over and over again or fast forward to what we think might happen or anticipate in the future we miss this we miss this moment of now um Mm -hmm. loving more that's tapping into that energy of love in your heart for yourself and for other people being true to your heart is not faking it not you know trying to be what other people want you to be but really being you um Mm -hmm. things like that feeling free living without fear aligning with your purpose being patient being grateful, and seeing wonder. I mean, people don't often think about the fact that there's wonder around us all the time. And when we pay attention and we spot it and we savor it, we again give ourselves this energetic gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had, um, I want to touch on purpose because that that really jumped out to me as, as being very much relatable to my work, to my personal life as well. But just in saw terms of being in awe we my wife and i had the opportunity to travel to italy mm. um and we did things like tour the vatican and the vatican museum which is just the sistine chapel and michelangelo's work on the ceiling and Raphael and the school Amazing. of athens painting just yeah it's really easy to be inspired and stand there kind of in awe of what's <laughs> in front of you and then on the second half of the trip we climbed mount etna which is an active volcano wow. so to be on top of a lava flow and just kind of being in awe of the natural world was kind of a cool, um, you know, bookend of the trip. And, you know, flying back, I have to say that I felt more kind of open to what else I had to think about on the plane, whether it was work or personal life. I just felt, I mean, maybe it was being on a vacation without kids, which is the first time we've been expansive about, about feeling awe and wonder. Yeah. I think, and, and it's, it opens your mind and your heart and your thinking in a way that's not the same as being in your everyday groove, you know, sort of right. going through yeah. all your routines. Yeah. 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 And it was interesting to kind of think about this, this volcano has created this island of Sicily over the mm-hmm. last 600,000 years. Sure. So the takeaway from it was, man, we just, we're here for such a short period of time. Yeah. And it was very obvious to me. That's the impression that I got being there. And just, I guess, to your point, being open to those types of experiences and you don't have to travel to Italy. Oh my goodness. You know, be on the side of I'll I'll give you one of the, one of the assignments that my creative creativity teacher gave me when I was studying with him. He said, why don't you 
get lost on purpose. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, well, when you're coming back, you know, off on the highway, just get off at an exit you've never gotten off at. Just get lost. Don't don't open your GPS. Oh, yeah. Don't well, there was no GPS right then, but don't open your map and just see what you mm-hmm. find. Follow your nose. Right. There's mm. surprise and wonder all around. I mean, I remember walking into Harvard Square around that time and just parking on a side street and seeing things I never saw on a road that I had driven by thousand a thousand times, I'm sure. Right. So right. there's really, yeah. there's something to discover everywhere when we have our right. eyes open and are looking for it. Yeah, it's so true. Um, so purpose, I wanted to make sure I, I touched on that yeah. with you because, at the, and I'm flipping through my own book because I want to read just the, the heading to that section. It says, are you among the masses of people who find themselves doing work that does not feel aligned with their true purpose? Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what the statistics are <laughs> on that, but I have to feel like the world that we live in right now, it's it's pretty high. I think if people were answering honestly and truthfully with themselves, we'd raise our hands that we're maybe not doing the work that truly aligns with with our purpose or even know what that means. So can you tell me a little bit about your thoughts yeah, on purpose? I and, mean, you know, so the first thing I wrote here is... Um, did you follow a path that, that your family wanted for you? That's a big one that I hear all the time. Right. Um, I hear people say, how did I get into XYZ industry? You know, the insurance industry or the building industry or whatever it is. I, I had an internship in college and then I got a job offer and then I found myself here. And do I love this? Does this matter to me? You know, we end up following paths without really pausing to make careful decisions. And that's not a problem if you wake up today and say, well, okay, well, I want to make a shift. And it doesn't have to mm-hmm. be a big, massive shift like I did of selling my business and you know going down a completely right. path. It could be staying in your family business, but then pursuing something on the, in your free time that really mm-hmm. is, fulfills your purpose. I was speaking to um, an audience yesterday of um, Healthcare Business Women's Association, actually in Dublin, Ireland. It was really fun. And a woman stayed on the call at the end and she said, you know, she's a brilliant scientist in a pharmaceutical company. And she said, I'm not going to change my career, but I realized recently what my real purpose in life is. And my, my ears perked up. And she said, I, we have two biological children and I'm really here to foster other children. I'm here to give other children... Oh, wow security in their lives like we've been able to give mm-hmm. to our our you know our own children and she said mm-hmm. when i realized that i just felt so excited about what was coming in my future I, which that's is amazing. the beautiful thing that she said right and i think that's a really good point to maybe zero in on a little bit is that we're not talking about everybody having to just up and sell their business no, or quit their job absolutely it, not. artists right but is it is it your experience that when somebody like that uh, client or, or that was just uh, an attendee at my with, at this program I spoke at. Yeah, when they when they have that realization that they have a purpose outside of work, how do they start to think about their work? Is it easier to <laughs> just be a, an adult like we all have yeah. to, right? We have to have careers and pay bills and you know well, I, send the kids to school. Well, what I've observed is when people find that purpose, if it's not tied directly to the work that they do all day every day but they find some other dimension mm-hmm. that gives them huge satisfaction and meaning, it makes the, everything else feel better, it makes them feel better. Yeah, it brings yeah. more energy into their way of approaching the whole world because they feel that right. satisfaction and they feel you know, that they're aligned with something right. meaningful to them. And then right. I see people yeah. who, I've got one client who has a dog who has just brought huge amount of, love into her life but also now she's the dog is a service animal and does she takes him to um a home where 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 people are ill and he's kind of gives people comfort and it makes her happy and i mean it's it's a level she was leading a good life and now she's leading a life that lights her up even more because she has the love of this very very special animal i love being in his presence but she gets to share him with other people and it sees the enrichment that he brings to them right so it comes in every kind of form yeah and again it's there's no playbook 
there's no blueprint that everybody can follow. Yeah. It's about, you know, being on a journey and exploring some of yeah. these things to try to figure out what lights you up. So what I, what I observed in her was she had this feeling like she loved animals. She'd never had an animal. And she said, I think I want to see what it would be like to be a, a dog parent. <laughs> and it, it became so much more than she ever expected. Now, I had a dog early in my, well, I had some dogs when I, we were growing up, but my husband and I had a dog when we were first married. And it turns out it wasn't the right time for us to have a dog. We weren't around enough. Right. The animal was really not happy. It was a very social creature. And we ended up yeah. giving him to a family that had a big, big yard and kids to play with that dog all the time. It made me feel much better. So it's, there's never one yeah. answer for everybody and it's never the right answer at every time in your life. Right? Yeah. That's a good segue. I wanted to call out um, the Discovery Dozen. So embedded through the book are these exercises. How would you describe them? I don't want to put Yeah, so the Discovery in, in Dozen um, is something I'm so proud because Seth Godin not only reviewed the book, but this is, this is what he focused on in his review, which meant the yeah, world to me. Yeah, which is really, really cool. As a <laughs> Seth Godin fan, you know, I think that's A, very impressive, but B, it's really interesting because I think he just came out with a book about meaning and purpose, yeah. right? So even, I mean, Seth Godin was He's known as a New York Times bestseller marketer, yeah. but now it's like, I think everybody's kind of catching up to this idea that maybe we should be doing something meaningful yeah. and even he is in that space. So for yeah, and he, somebody like him. I mean, he's a huge advocate of all of us um, doing work that has meaning and, and getting it into the world, right? In a, and in a, I'm just going to, play off of that for one second, which is why I believe in the power of living big. Because if we keep ourselves small, we don't bring all of our greatness into the world. We're really it here. Is. We have this opportunity to bring, all, to first of all, value our gifts and then to give them to the world in whatever ways they, they are. So mm -hmm. living your biggest life is, if, I mean, for some people it could be, you know, having a fancy car or a bigger house. And I have no judgment about that. But the way that I think about it is how do we live the biggest version of ourselves and bring mm -hmm. all of our greatness mm -hmm. into the world? And imagine if right. more of us did that, right? Right. And the Discovery right. Dozen is a kind of um, deceptively simple structure, but it has a lot of different ways to be applied and used. And that's one of the reasons why I use it throughout the book in different kinds of ways so that people can hopefully start mm -hmm. creating their own Discovery Dozen versions for whatever's right. coming up in their lives. And the idea of it and is it's a simple fill in the blank sentence. And because there's a dozen discoveries to make, you're going to start with the fill in the blank sentence and you're going to repeat it 12 times and you're going to complete that sentence 12 times. So you have 12 mm -hmm. different distinct answers to the thing that you're trying to figure out or the ideas that you're trying to generate or so let's let's go back to you that did. chapter. Of course, I've, I I closed the book here. Um, I have it. Yeah, I have uh, it queued up. It's an example and oh, purpose. Yeah. Uh, uncover or reconnect to your purpose, and this is why I want to call this out because I think it's kind of an in vogue topic to talk about purpose and meaning. But this is really what you've attempted to put together for people is a practical way of, of starting to explore some of these things. Yes, and it and it. This is as easy, as simple as just answering some of these questions. And the first one is, if I could spend my days doing anything, I'd love to blank. And just, it, it, and so to your description. let's play you together for a minute, like, Jim. What, how would you maybe end that sentence in a few different ways? If you were doing um, it. I would spend time with my kids. I would um, travel. I would work around the house. Um, do you want me to keep going? Yeah, give me another two or three. Um, I would honestly, I would probably work on my business. Really? I, I would probably work on the podcast. Um, in a roundabout way, I think this this exercise, these conversations that I have with people is is I didn't know it to start out, but I think it's trying to scratch a creative itch, mm -hmm. so to speak. So I think I'm fortunate um, to be doing some of the things that. If I could do anything, I'd be doing them. I'd probably be doing some more nonprofit work or volunteer work. Or um, if I had all the money in the world, I'd maybe start a foundation of some kind. 
forget what the exact question was. It was if I could now. spend my days doing anything, I'd love to. Yeah. Well, the reason, I, the reason I asked you to keep going is that the way that this exercise is always pretty remarkable is the first few things of the top of mind things that we know we would say, right? Is right. when we go to number six and number eight and number 10 and we push to get all the way to 12 because people tell me all the time, I'm up to 11, I can't get to 12. And I always say, just say the beginning of the sentence again and just whatever pops in your mind and let yourself be right. ridiculous, exaggerated, doesn't matter, don't edit, just see what comes up. It's somewhere further down the list that we find these gems that have been in us that we didn't know were there. It is. That's where the discovery comes it from. That's where that deep yeah, intuitive, yeah. sometimes people are very surprised by what they, what they write. Um, or I'm they sure. might end up writing the same kind of thing two times, three times in that list, but with different ways. They go, wow, that's yeah. like, that's really, that's really there for me. I appreciate you challenging me to go through that and sharing the example. Cause what I felt like my first reaction to that is, is the usual suspects, yeah. family, Right. That's right. Kids. And there's nothing wrong travel, with those, but we're trying to go deeper. All right. What are the things that, you know, I normally do on my free time? Yes. But once you get past that easy checklist, it becomes, oh man, what would I do? That's right. Right. And, and have you really given yourself, I don't know that I've given myself a lot of time to sit down and reflect on. That's it. Which is, that's it. exactly yeah. what this exercise is here for. Yeah. So this, yeah. the next one was, well, um, when I think of making my work blank, my heart soars. That's another way you could go at it if that one appealed to you more. Or my deepest satisfaction comes from, oh, my deepest yeah. satisfaction comes from, you know, there's a lot of wonderful things that different people say for that. When you start answering mm -hmm. those questions and you give yourself, sometimes repeat the same discovery dozen twice or three times during the week, different words, yeah, yeah. different times of day, you'll find different things show up. Right, of course. And sometimes when I'm doing this with a client, and they give me 12 answers to whatever the discovery dozen, you know, starter sentences. Sometimes we can connect the dots and see how different ideas are really, they fit together. They're really related. And that can give us a, a really interesting place to move forward from. So we right, can right. really- Right, so you start to see some common themes throughout that you can start right, to connect some dots right. and, and illuminate for people. This has been here. And, right? and this is the kind of thing you can say, oh my God, I'm so anxious. Well, what am I anxious about? Well, I, right now I'm anxious because, and when you do that, you might all of a sudden see something you didn't, you weren't aware of in your, you know, front of your mind, or you might see things mm -hmm. that are related and say, oh, I'm putting a picture together here. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to figure out when you're confused about something. It's a way to generate ideas. If you, I, I, one of my stories that I sometimes tell is that I had a client way back. And she called me one day, we were on a coaching session. She said, I have to write my blog and I'm completely blank. And this is a woman that I knew was full of ideas. She was stuck. So I said, well, let's mm -hmm. have fun with it. I could write my blog about. And, you know, I know what her industry is. And she, she came up with 12 ideas. She was, huh. And I said, well, which three are the most fun and most interesting for you? And so she circled those. Mm -hmm. And then we did a discovery mm -hmm. dozen for each one of them. If I want to write about, and she was, I forget the exact nature of her consulting right now, um, but if I want to write an article about how to onboard, you know, employees successfully, or something in the HR space, and she said I could include, and then all of a sudden she had an outline for that topic, and she did it for the other two, and yeah. she had three articles outlined in less than five minutes. And she, yeah. at the beginning of the call, she was completely stuck. Yeah, yeah. So Which it's is great. Just pretty, being it's open to the fears that are there. It. Yeah. 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 So we touched on the fact there's, there's being and doing. Yes. The being that I really am, am drawn to right now, and maybe it's just my, my most recent obsessed session is purpose. Um, when we get into the doing, you start out with intuition. Yeah. Which, Listen to your intuition is kind of the first step yeah. for all the doing I, because your intuition is such a powerful guide and you can really trust yeah. it 
And it's right. the trick is some of us hear it, some of us really don't hear it, but we can get m- closer and closer to A, hearing it, honoring it, trusting it, believing it. Your intuition does not Agreed. push you in the wrong direction. It's a very, very reliable right. compass. Yeah. Right, right. And on the back of, and again, it's no particular order, I think, but creativity is next, yeah, right? Creative. So trusting your gut, That's, cultivating your and creativity, And all that energy right? that it gives you for the doing. In so, doing. The, you know, you can just absolutely fuel your spirit by creating. Yeah. No matter what your mood is, if you're happy, do create to be happier. <laughs> if you're frustrated or <laughs> angry, create to just move that energy through you, you know? Right. Because the energy of any, any emotion, particularly difficult emotions, that's, that's where we get bogged down, but we can actually offload it if, if we have a, yeah, yeah. an avenue for that. And creativity right. is a fabulous avenue for that. So yeah, and let's um maybe let's go. If you have it pulled up, can we look at? Do you have a discovery dozen in the creativity section? Let's what, see. what would that look like for people? Oh my goodness! To start well, I can just give you ideas, but um, let's see what I have here. Look, yeah, I had earmarked. So yeah, on page seventy-three. Yep. Um. So stimulate yourself by probing what excites you. Mm-hmm. Something I'd really enjoy creating today is. It would be so much fun to experiment and try. If I knew nobody would judge me, I would create. That's a big one. And those are all. Big. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes that we're just worried one. like, oh, I would make this, you know, uh, sculpture, but people will probably think it's terrible. So I'm not going to do it. Right. But if you right. feel like putting your hands into clay and, you know, shaping it or chipping, you know, chiseling away at a block of wood would be fun. Do it. Just who cares? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of us are kind of stuck in that mind frame where we're not doing things because we think about how others might think of us or think of our work or, you I, know, that's enormous. Or society in general. Right. Culture. Right. It's, it's just prevalent everywhere. It's, I'd imagine. It's, it's huge. And this is yeah. a preoccupation. I, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. A preoccupation with it better be perfect because otherwise what will people think? Right. Right. And what I've come to really embrace fully is that first of all, even if you were Michelangelo, somebody might not like what you do. I have a client whose son's a cartoonist, a very, very, very brilliant cartoonist. And he thinks that Matisse's work is awful. And Matisse is one of the most admired artists on the planet of all times, right? So there's nobody right. who's going to be appreciated and loved by everybody, even if you are a genius, right? Yeah. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Number two, you can just decide you're just doing it for yourself and it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Mm. And this is where some of the other concepts in the book, right? About being open to fear, facing your fears. You talk about that yep. in the book, right? There's all these different aspects of this same kind of journey that we're on yeah. that maybe, you know, we need to spend a little bit more time on than others to make sure we're open to, you know, kind of taking that path forward. Yeah. And I, I really believe that when we do this work, even if you just, you know, dive into one chapter, just give yourself a little mm-hmm. taste of one thing and you start to realize that it has kind of an impact on a lot of things and it's being in this Mm -hmm. work you know you and i've talked a lot about personal development work Mm -hmm. and there's some people who are all over it and there's some people who are like well i don't know (laughs) i don't don't, know i don't care i'm afraid to go there or whatever but the truth is when we do go inside and we do liberate and reveal things about ourselves and express more and show up mm-hmm. in ways where we're not hampered by worries about other people's judgments or our own self-judgment or any of those things. Mm-hmm. And we, we let ourselves really kind of show up in a bigger way. We give ourselves a huge gift. And, right. and, and as I said, I believe that we really contribute to the betterment of, of everything. Because I will tell you that for every one of us that does any of this personal development work, it has a ripple effect. People notice, right. people are inspired, um, people hey. we model for not only our children, but we model for a lot of people around us, for our colleagues, for 
our community members. There's so many ways that we can have an impact, a positive impact that we may never even be aware of. Right. And that's, again, not knowing where, what the outcome looks like and just being, you know, comfortable doing the work, being on the journey, however you want to describe it. Yeah. I think it's, I say it's do really it for really yourself. Be selfish. It's an act yeah, of self-love right. to do this work. Yeah. And then the, yeah. the ripple effects are just something that you start to become a little yeah. bit aware of here and there. And you, oop, that's pretty yeah. exciting. Well, it's great. I encourage people again, the book is Live Big. I encourage people to check it out, A Manifesto for a Creative Life. Um, before I let you go, can I put you on the spot a little bit? Yeah. Just ask you a couple more questions. <laughs> so, I know we did a little bit of prep on the conversation and I should have mentioned this, but one of the questions I like to ask people, this is a show about well-being in general. I think we've talked a lot about that, about self-care and self-love. What are some of your creative outlets? Where, yeah. where do you go to kind of tap into your creativity? Are there any habits and rituals that you feel like you go back to oh. most often or can't think without? Well, one, one thing that, um, that has changed a lot in my life is that in 2015, I courageously took a painting class. Um, oh, cool. My husband had his last sabbatical in his academic career, and I said, I'm taking a sabbatical, and what am I going to do? Whoops, what am I going to do? And it, if, what I did is I took this painting class, and I, and I started writing my book. Those were my projects for the sabbatical. Oh, yeah. And taking that painting oh, class great. changed my life. I, wow. I now have, I've been studying with, that was in Washington um, at the Corcoran School, but I've been studying at the, Museum of Fine Art, uh, the School of the Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts. Ever since I take a course every semester wow. with a brilliant teacher and I'm a, getting to be a pretty serious painter, something I never foresaw for myself, um, which great. I, I truly, truly love. I started writing last year to a client of mine teaches an amazing writing class and I started testing the waters there and I've had a piece that's in a printed anthology that was published this summer and I'm continuing that work. So there are parts of myself as a creator that I never, ever either dared to or expected to explore that I find incredibly mm -hmm. um, meaningful. And then I, I would just say That's that good. I love the opportunities I have all day as I advocate for to think of, oh, well, what can I create now? Like, what are my opportunities right. in the face of a challenge or in the face of open time or whatever it may be? And mm -hmm. I... I have truly learned to adopt this mindset. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's Indeed. something as we practice, it becomes more and more of just right. who we are and how we, how we approach the world. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're certainly a, a living example of the work that you do. Thank Where you. should people find the book? I know that there's a digital copy that just came out. Where should people yes, go to Yes, I'm excited about the digital out? version because it's just as beautiful as the paper version. It's especially nice for people who live outside the U.S. because then they don't have to pay crazy shipping. If you want the paper version, shipping is free, just like on Amazon, but don't buy it on Amazon because it's not going to be a new copy there. Somebody yeah. somebody hijacked my my Amazon page. Crazy story um, and a side note. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing anyway, that that can happen. So in right on the homepage of Right on the homepage of my website at RochelleSeltzer.com, which I hope you'll have in the show notes. Yeah. Great. Awesome. And you are actively coaching oh, some yeah. of this work. What are you working on? So you're actively coaching. Is there another book? What's on the horizon <laughs> for, for you well, besides the creative acts? I'm super excited about the clients that I work with. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I also work with a cohort of great women where they have one-on-one -on -one coaching with me as well as working in a group and they get inspired by each other. So that's and it's amazing. Um, I'm creating something very exciting for January. It's called Creation Vacation. It's going to be a five-day retreat. Oh, cool. It's just, just cooking right now. So that's going to be coming. And I hope to do that every year at the beginning of the year. Um, awesome. I have my Live Big Live retreat is going to be next spring, which is a powerful, beautiful experience, a uh, three-day weekend. And um, I'm speaking a lot now. I, I mentioned that I was just speaking to some groups in yeah. Europe, and it's a lot of fun for me to do that work. And, and some of those 
uh, the people that I meet through those engagements are inviting me to come in and work with their women's affinity groups or ERGs inside of corporations. And so that's another way oh, that great. I get to amplify the impact in my work. Yeah. Well, it's, again, it's, it's really important. I think, you know, that section on purpose, I think the people that I work with in the financial space, if we're talking about their career, I just think there's so many people that are thinking about that topic and <laughs> just opening them up more to the creative process and all these different aspects of your work, I think is, would be, is extremely helpful uh, for a lot of people to check out. And in the words of of Seth Godin. This is a terrific book, The Discovery Dozen, which we highlighted a couple of examples of. The Discovery Dozen exercises alone will change your creative practice and your life for the better. So I think that's high praise from a, a pretty yeah, successful pretty author, blown away. creator. <laughs> so so I, uh, I hope people check out your work at RochelleSeltzer.com. Check out the book direct from the website. And um, I just thank you so much for being here. Appreciate uh, I it. I really am so grateful for the invitation. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. We'll see you soon. Thanks again, Rochelle. Bye, Take Jean. care. You can check out this conversation, many more on modernfinancialwellness.com. You can also get the podcast audio version on Spotify and Apple, wherever else you get your podcasts. And uh, as always, thanks for checking us out. Till next time.